Welcome back. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. <laughs> I thought I would have something really funny to... Y'all heard that, right? Sound like something from Resident Evil. <laughs> if this is the last video <laughs> you see of me, hi. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth where sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. I know. Obviously the clicker in this room really <laughs> doesn't like that either. If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I will remember our time fondly. Y'all, let's talk about some favorites, okay? 2020 is probably one of the weirdest and at times truly awful years we all had to experience together. And no one can take that away from us. With that said, because of crippling depression and being scared for most of 2020, I tried a lot of products. Unfortunately, most of the products I did try were a bit older. And being that I want to stick with the tradition of keeping things in 2020, I'm only going to be talking about the products that came out in 2020. I believe all of these came out in 2020. There might be one or two that may have fallen through the cracks and came out maybe like last year. And my apologies if you want to be a stickler for the rules. And with that said, I feel like this is a year that there was no makeup releases, but at the same time, there was a lot of makeup releases where companies I guess didn't know what to do so they just threw a bunch of shit at the wall to see what sticks. So I'm only going to talk about the best of the best of the best with honors products in 2020. I almost keep saying 2021 it's because I know I want this to be over. So I'm already jumping ahead which I feel like everyone's doing so. Anyway, so this is a list of the kind of shit that I would totally repurchase if anything should happen to any of these little bubbies. One last thing, I didn't mention any skincare in this video because I kind of feel like that should be a separate thing. Otherwise, this video could be really, 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 really long. If you want to see something with skincare, let me know and I will probably not be able to do it before the end of this year, but I could do something potentially in January. Anyway, if you're not interested, just say like, no, bitch, we don't want that. And I'm totally fine, whatever. <laughs> I love how aggressive you are. 2020, the year of being aggressive. Anyway, let's start this list off with a bunch of brushes. This year, I have fallen in love with natural hair brushes. So much so that I'm actually slowly replacing the synthetic ones with natural hair ones. Because at the end of the day, whether you like natural hair or synthetic, I firmly believe that you should really start investing in good tools and tools that ultimately do the work for you so you're not sitting there jerking off any products. With that said, I tried a lot of awesome brushes this year and these have been my absolute favorites. Y'all know I love Refer, it's no secret. I love them anytime I get a chance to talk about them. I will because I love them. I love them so much and I really love their brush quality. I have been obsessed with the numbers 13 and 14, which are just absolutely perfect if you have hooded eyes. And of course, one of my absolute favorite brushes to pick up shimmers is the number 21. They're all perfect. Refer is currently having a sale where all their brushes are 20% off and I believe that sale goes into the end of this year. While I love and appreciate their low price points for good quality natural hair brushes. I also love a good fucking sale. So if you ever have been interested, some of their brush sets are still on sale as well as some of their singles. So definitely go check it out if you feel so inclined. The other brand that has quickly become one of my favorites is Bristles Beauty. The brushes that have been my absolute favorite are the E03DM, which is perfect for the crease, E04RS, which is one of the best, 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 best smudger brush for your lash line. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's precise, she is perfect. And last but not least, P07 slash P. That brush is a fantastic liner brush. It's thin, precise, and feels great in the waterline. I also wanna note too, I believe this brand is also having a sale until the end of the year. In any case, more information will be down in the description box, but that's another brand that's so fucking fantastic. So I highly recommend checking them out if you are interested. And last but certainly not least, I got to try Sonya G and I regret nothing. <laughs> Those brushes are fucking sickening. Sonya G released her holiday brush set. So all of these brushes for the most part, I believe actually came out last year, maybe with the exception of one that is a new brush, I think. I don't know too much about the Sonya G lore, so I apologize if I'm speaking out of my ass, but I kind of want to just focus on this holiday brush set. While I enjoyed all the brushes from this set, I think the true standouts are the Mini Booster, again, another amazing crease brush if you have hooded eyes, the Flat Definer, which is a brush that will allow you to be precise and fit into those hard to reach areas without irritation. And the brush that has been my absolute favorite out of this whole bunch is the Mini Base. 
I have been obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with cream products as of late, and this is by far one of the nicest brushes I have ever used to apply cream contour, bronzer, and blush. Now let's move into some primers. For eye primers, I'm gonna talk about Gerard Cosmetics. I know I've been talking about it a lot this year. And honestly, I'm very picky when it comes to primers. My tried and true has always been NARS Soft Matte Concealer. When using the Clean Canvas Base, my eyeshadow looks rich and has great longevity. One of my favorite things to do with this product is actually to pop it all over the lid and just use a little color liner on top. I really like how this product evens my skin tone without darkening it. it just looks fucking seamless. Initially, they only had one shade. I believe it was like their medium, which was a little hair too dark for me, but I still was able to make it work. Now I want to say there's at least four or five different variations. So I really like the fact that there are multiple colors within this product. The next thing is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I love Tatcha and it's no surprise that they're on my list. If you're a fan of the putty primer, this one is just so much better. I would say the biggest difference between the hockey puck and the liquid is that the hockey puck sometimes can give you a little bit of a white cast. Maybe it's in my head, but I kind of feel like this product is a touch bit more hydrating. If you've never tried the silk canvas, highly recommend checking out the liquid version over the putty. Two concealers that I have been fucking obsessed with, and because they pretty much do the same exact thing, except one has a touch more coverage. I'm talking about Ricker Beauty and Pat McGrath. These products have great longevity. They don't settle into your fine lines and they both do a fantastic job of brightening the under eye area. The Rare Beauty is more on the medium side. So I like to use this product when I have complexion products that do not provide me that full coverage. Like if I wanna use tinted moisturizer or a CC cream or a BB cream, I tend to go for the Rare Beauty. But if I want a little bit more full coverage to my base because obviously I haven't been sleeping, then I go with the Pat McGrath because this bitch is full coverage for days. Mama Pat comes to the rescue. In any case, these have been my favorite two concealers of this year, and it's really no surprise. I feel like in every description box, it's either a fucking Rare Beauty or a Pat McGrath. Very rarely, maybe I'll throw like a L'Oreal in there just to like confuse people. But for the most part, those have been my absolute favorite concealers this year. When it comes to foundations, I tried a lot of foundations this year. Unfortunately, most of the foundations I have tried, I can't talk about because technically they have been out already. And I'm not gonna lie, Sicily is fucking king. All right, I'm gonna say it. It's like I've seen the other side. <laughs> Every time I use Sicily, it's like I've seen the other side and for one brief moment, I forget that we're living in this timeline. The foundation that I have loved and obsessed over this year is actually from ColourPop. Pretty fresh, hyaluronic, hydrating foundation. This foundation is hydrating, has a great wear time, doesn't settle into my fine lines, and it's the kind of foundation that has a natural skin-like finish without it being matte. Looking at you, Gucci foundation. This is one of the most comfortable foundations I have in my collection because I love when a product feels like you have nothing on your face. Nothing irks me more when you feel like you have fucking 10 pounds of makeup on. I'm fat, I don't need to add any more extra weight to my fucking face. This super fucking weightless, I love it. And I love the price point too. So good job, ColourPop. Ooh, who would have thought I would ever say that? Ooh. Let's move on to some powder. Again, I don't think this is a fucking surprise to anybody. And I'm not gonna bore you too much with this one because one, it's not available because this product saw the future of 2020 and was like, nope, I'm out. See you in 2021. And you know what? I respect that. In any case, this is the best powder in the world. I don't care. I fucking say it every goddamn day. This is the best powder in the fucking world. I love it. I love it for me. This shit makes me a better person. This shit catfishes me. This shit makes my foundations that sometimes look uh, and make them look better. This blurs and makes my face look so seamless. I cannot stress how much I love this product. This is the holy grail of powders in my personal opinion. And I'm so happy that this is actually coming back in 2021 because for a hot brief moment, I thought that was the case. And I started panic buying now because I was like, I need to have this all through my preciousness. And I'm so happy I did but it's fine <laughs> because by the rate that I've been using them, I'm about to pretty much hit pan on this guy. So it's fine. I have like fucking three in the back. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> They're coming in the casket with me, boys. It's fine. Moving on to powders. I want to talk about some face palettes, some blush highlighter duos. I want to say that this year I feel like has been the year of the face palettes and the duos. And honestly, from drugstore to indie to high end, I feel like I have a lot of products that just like fucking killed it for me this year. 
from Drugstore. Elf has been coming out with some awesome products this year and the bite size line is fucking everything. You cannot beat something incredibly pigmented and amazing for $3. Moving on to Indie, there are two brands that I love and I'm obsessed with. First one being Midas Cosmetics. And can I tell you, this face palette done in collaboration with Neon MUA, bitch. I can't, I can't. Like this, this is a fucking good face palette. It's everything. It's the face palette that eats other fucking face palettes for breakfast. There are four different variants in this collection. You're light, you're medium, you're rich, and you're deeply rich. And they recently were featured in Allure magazine, so again, congratulations to them. Honestly, this is one of my favorite products from Midas this year. They fucking killed it. They f absolutely destroyed it. I love this. From the Alien Slut Wet Highlighter to the Smooth and Soft Blush, Bronzer, and Contour, it's everything. Highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. And of course, if you feel so inclined. The other brand I want to talk about is my son, my child, Lethal Cosmetics. We all know I love them. And they release a set of blushes and bronzers and face palettes this year and while they completely killed it with their blushes and bronzers their face palettes are absolutely stunning as well in these face palettes you get a nice highlighter a blush and a bronzer that are also featured in four different variants I feel like their face palettes also have a really really good range but for me the absolute standout in the face palettes they have this one fucking highlighter that is just so good it's so slutty I love it absolutely obsessed it can be found in the light palette I think it's called chromosphere I, I'm just obsessed, <laughs> like just straight up obsessed. It's so fucking good. Now, keeping in the same vein of fantastic highlighters in a face palette or a duo, I want to mention Wayne Goss. So Wayne Goss came out with cosmetics this year, and this brand is actually on my favorites list twice because I'm completely obsessed with their lip products, but their blush duo is amazing. The blushes are beautiful, very easy to use, very lovely, but at the end of the day, the standout is the highlighter. Fuck me sideways, this shit's great. I think what makes it special is the preferred technique of using these products. If you're looking for more of like a demure celestial slut, go check out the Blush Peony palette. Oh my god, bitch, it's awesome. And last but certainly not least, I want to mention Natasha Denona. I really, really love the fucking love palette. I love it so goddamn much. I really do. And in a way, I kind of feel like I'm the only one that likes it. <laughs> and that's fine, I could care less. It wasn't made for you, it was made for me, okay? And of course, it would take 2020, the most fucked up year in my existence on this earth, to make me obsessed with a product from this brand that I have such a love-hate relationship with. It makes all the sense. But here we are. I think this is actually what started my obsession with cream products this year. I love the formula in this palette. It's very easy to use, very buildable, blendable, and had great longevity. Highly recommend checking that out again if you feel so inclined. I'm going to stop saying that because I feel like I'm annoying myself. Never want you to think that I'm pushing you shit. If you want it, the links are down below. If you don't want it, I, I don't care. <laughs> These are the favorites that are for me. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Anyway, let's move on to some bronzers. Honestly, it's been so difficult for me to use anything else but Tom Ford. I know, I know, I'm that bitch. Until I came upon two products this year that were just surprisingly really fucking awesome. And the first product I want to talk about, Catrice, as well as Lethal Cosmetics. And I mentioned both because I think these were some of the bronzers that came out this year that I find myself reaching for as much as I do the Tom Ford bronzer. Catrice is a great drugstore option. It's luminizing, which means it has a lovely shimmer, but the shimmer is not overwhelming. It gives the skin a nice amount of warmth without looking like an Oompa Loompa. It comes close in regard to color match with the Tom Ford Soleil bronzer. Now the other bronzer from Lethal Cosmetics is amazing because I finally found a cool tone bronzer. A proper cool tone boy. Not a dead fish looking bronzer. It's smooth, pigmented, easy to blend, and has great longevity. If you're looking for a nice matte bronzer that will not make you flat, highly, highly fucking recommend it. So fucking good. Honestly, I feel like I went a little blush crazy this year. And unfortunately, a lot of blushes that have become my favorites are things that were released last year or a couple of years ago. And I don't want to keep repeating myself because that's the one thing that annoys the shit out of me. So I'm not actually going to be talking about any powder blushes. All the powder blushes that have been my favorites are pretty much the ones that you can find in the face palettes, which I just mentioned previously. So I want to really just focus on the cream blushes. That has been one of my absolute favorite things this year. I have tried quite a few because I feel like this was a year of cream blushes. Blush. And to me, out of all of them, the two true standouts are from Tower 28 and Ritual Defeat. Both of these products are absolutely wonderful. They're pigmented, they're easy to use, and they do not cause any breakouts, and they are not greasy. 
They both have great staying power and they make you look fucking cooler than you will ever be in your life. It brings you like a nice wash of color to the cheeks where you kind of look like you're sun-kissed. It's so fucking perfect. And it also freaks people out because you know, we've all been pretty much quarantining. So it's just like, when did you go outside? I got sun by my window. Like, I love that. Tower 28, I would say, has more mainstream colors. Very flattering, we love her. But if you wanna be a little bit more daring and turn heads in your next Zoom call, check out Ritual Defeat. Their nectar pigments, they're the stuff that dreams are made of. They're just so fucking cool. I always get so many compliments when I wear them. Highly recommend both products. Also, I wanna mention these two products in particular because they're not only just cheek safe, but they're lip safe, and I believe Ritual Defeat are eye safe. Not sure about Tower 28, but definitely with Ritual Defeat, you can use them as a fun cream eyeshadow, celestial cyborg sex moment. It's fucking awesome. We love a multi-use bitch. As for highlighters, I love me a good Alien Slut highlighter. And I've tried so many highlighters that have come out this year. And without doubt, I feel like these are blow your dick off good. Like they're so fucking good. They're earth shattering Alien Slut goodness. They'll keep you glowing to the gods. I know I mentioned a couple of my favorites in the face palettes portion of this video. So I'm not gonna repeat myself, but rest assured that those products are also on this list. But with that said, here are some highlighters that are blinding. They melt beautifully into the skin, have amazing longevity, and do not emphasize any texture on your face. They make you look like a sexy cyborg sent from the future to fuck everybody. And that's what I want in a highlighter. I feel like the most surprising things I found this year were lip products, something that I really don't pay any attention to. And I really don't give it any thought because I am just like a basic boring ass bitch when it comes to lip products. However, I found that everything that I'm about to list has exceeded my expectations and then some. I'm very simple when it comes to lip products. I want something no frills, hydrating, comfortable, doesn't bleed into the outer corners, has excellent staying power. And if they can cook me breakfast every once in a while then, Obviously I have to marry them. With that said, here are the lip products that I have been obsessed with and has made my 2020 a little bit more manageable and keeping me my namesake and with an E. Since my Chantecaille powder is no longer available this year, my absolute favorite product that you could technically pick up now is the Lethal Cosmetics Eyeliners. They are fucking everything. Everything. Absolutely fucking everything. Did I say everything? Because they're fucking everything. If you're looking for amazing eyeliners, life-changing eyeliners, 
waterproof, amazingly opaque eyeliners that do not crack or fade. You could layer these boys and make new colors to boot. If you're looking for something that will not irritate your sensitive, sensitive waterline, bitch, look no further. No shade is better than the other. All of these babies are perfect. The other liner that's my favorite this year is from Makeup Maniacs. I received a pretty recent product, but I love how different and unique it is, and that is their multi-chrome eyeliners. This brand makes awesome liquid liners to begin with. Their formula is sensitive eye friendly. You never have to worry about it flaking, smudging, or running. This shit stays in place. And this is the first multi-chrome liner I have ever tried, so I was intrigued by how it would work. I found this product to be wonderfully opaque. It legit steals the show. The next products I wanna mention are setting sprays. I found that these are the two products that I keep going back to time and time again. They both do an excellent job locking in everything and making sure my makeup doesn't fall apart while I'm on hour 10 of sitting in front of a fucking computer. This setting spray helps my soul stay in my body. <laughs> Heavy claims, I know. <laughs> The first one I want to talk about is from Milk Makeup. Milk Makeup, not gonna lie, it's a pretentious brand for me. And there has been some cool stuff and there has been some shit stuff, but the one thing I can say, I can truly say that they're fucking amazing at is their primers. Their Hydrogra primer is fucking amazing. So when I saw that they made a setting spray, I lost my mind. The setting spray mirrors the primer in the sense that it stays in place. It keeps everything wonderfully hydrated. Not dewy, but hydrated. I used to be a ride or die for the Urban Decay All Nighter, but not anymore. Get that shit the fuck out of here. Milk makeup is here to stay. The other setting spray that I've been obsessed with is from Hourglass. I think the worst thing about the setting spray is that it's $48 and the sprayer bukkakes you. Once you get over those two things, this setting spray is everything. The mister is so airy, it barely feels like anything is on your face. The setting spray provides a little blurring effect, but keeps you radiant, refreshed, and makes you a better person. And now let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. Much like last year, I'm not gonna spend a few minutes on each one of these palettes, because one, that is too much fucking time, that also sounds incredibly fucking boring, and I have reviews on most of these products, so definitely go watch some of the older videos. However, I can safely say that all these palettes have one thing in common. It's how much I enjoy using them. Sure, maybe some of them are not as advertised. Looking at you, Natasha Denona Triceratops palette. All of these palettes have amazing quality. There's no cracking, there's no fading, they have great longevity, they're easy to play with, they're easy to blend. And I didn't feel creatively stunted when playing with these palettes. And I think in this very weird, awful year, sometimes you just wanna have fun. And that's what these palettes are for me. They're fun. They make me enjoy and love makeup and take me out of this shitty, shitty world for a couple of minutes. They're dependable, like a warm, non-judgmental, non-creepy hug. And I would happily repurchase any of these babies in a heartbeat.
And with that said, those are my favorites of 2020. Let me know down below if we have some of the same favorites or if you have something different, let me know because I would love to hear from y'all. Please be on the lookout for my worst of beauty, which will be featured tomorrow. And also I'm gonna be wearing the same clothes because I don't give a fuck. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. To all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies, thank you so much for keeping this disgusting, filthy, albeit trashy at times. Well, who are we kidding? Most of the time. Garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do it without you. And just thank you so much for believing in me. I love you. If you want to know what is currently on my face, along with where to get any of these products that I mentioned in today's video, everything will be listed in the description box below, along with where to find my merch and my podcast. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.